And I oh, see. There we are live. Oh, oh no, there's, there's a. There's a she'll shout her. I see the counter. It says no, live. The, the counter's going. What? The counter's going up. Splendid. I'm yes. Actually, yes, indeed. So, um, as I was just saying, we. Um, I'm just going to double check on my phone. This is a new feature on StreamYard that allows you to uh, pre-schedule things, which is pretty exciting. Don't we love technology? Yes, we are on. We are. On. I see Sammy Starshine. Fantastic. Hello, Sammy. So, May, we wore purple today. Yes. In your honor. Yes. And um, it's I'm the purple girl. I know. It's all the I know. It's to match your hair and your lovely lipstick and your ball. The ball. Oh, oh, I didn't oh, know that. Yeah. Really? We have a song for me. Oh yes, we do. We have a song about that. Should we sing it? Sure. Yeah, go on. So one, two, two three, three, and Hitler, Hitler has only got one ball. The other is in the Albert Hall now. Himmler was very similar. Oh, but then Goebbels had no balls at all. Da, 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 da. See, there you go. There's a second one. Yeah. We'll save it to later. Yes. It's, it's, oh it's, it's, rather, it's rather John, isn't it, that a song about Hitler? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the reference, he loves it. If it's a reverend, he loves those things. You know that. Yeah, absolutely. Know. Naughty boy. So well, here... greetings to May Pang. Absolutely. Your worldwide audience. Loads of people are just so delighted that you're going to be our guest today i hope that's just water or tea in that cup <clears throat> it is water that is the only water and it and it is. it's and sort it of is. dark, dark yeah. brown water with a little bit of ice cube right. in it this muse is rock and roll it's my scottish, domain scottish scottish water. scottish water yeah of oh, scottish water and okay. so okay. Without, without further ado i'm ruth mccartney this is dr angie mccartney and our very special guest today is the lovely all the way from new york city Miss May Pang. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, May and I have been working uh, very closely on a very exciting project, which is all about the John Lennon Lost Weekend period in, in time. And May is releasing some very rare photographs of uh, said John, John Winston Lennon in NFT digital format. Right. It's another uh, medium, and it's great. I love what's happening to it because it yeah. just it just it brings them alive to a lot another another yes, yeah. absolutely yeah absolutely so tell for the I'm sure most of the folks 99% of them watching around the world um, will know about what the lost weekend is but tell us the fans how it came to be and uh, where it was where all the places you and John went and how you had your camera with you and all that whole jazz. Well, you know, the, the last weekend is something he referred to because people kept asking him constantly because, you know, it's all about, oh, you were always drunk and down and out. And, and you know what? In actuality, the press kept bringing up the same two incidences throughout our time. So he just got tired. And one of the things about John that everybody um, should know is that he loved movies. He loved the old world uh actors and actresses and all that which you know back in the old days you know and in liverpool and everybody watched their telly and those cinemas and you know the film so he he loved uh he just referenced the the movie um the one with uh what's his face now all of a sudden ray is it ray milan is it oh, yeah. uh, right well, weekend well, again yeah he just right that's what he it was a reference and it was you know it was something very interesting and he said you're going to hear a lot he said that to me uh at one point and he said it's not directed at you but they will make it about us so yeah. that's what it was so mm -hmm. so but he, we said it so often that it's become part of my time period oh it's the lost weekend everything was the lost weekend exactly so. yeah. Interesting. I see. You know, that part about the Ray Milan film, I didn't even know that. I just thought no. it was a, a, a John Quip, like, you know, an 18 month weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he was, he was, he loved films. And, you know, when we were out in LA, it was amazing to, to see all these stars, you know, mm -hmm. going by and, you know, we're staying at this person's house that we would see. I mean, not everybody realized, you know, like when we met Elizabeth Taylor, I mean, oh my God, I was like, we're meeting who Elizabeth Taylor, you know, mm -hmm. and and you know, and the person that introduced us to Elizabeth Taylor, no, uh, 
was, um, you know, we were at, I'm sorry, the person that when we went to uh, this birthday party and it was to, for Ricky Martin's birthday, mind you, it's Ricky Martin, Dean Martin's son, not yes. Ricky Martin of the Latino you know, pop song. Right. Vita La, La Loca, whatever the song is, you know. Yeah. Um, so we were there and we heard about it and we ran over and next thing you know, it's like, oh, there's Elizabeth, you know, and I'm, I'm staring at her. She has the most gorgeous eyes. People said it. Oh, her eyes are I'm violet and they are, they are violet. Violet, yeah. Wow. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. they're beautiful. And uh, at the time it was funny because as, um, as all of a sudden her, one of her guests, her date or whatever you want to call it was her friend was coming down says, and says and bends over and I knew who it was and in fact I whispered into John's ear and I I had a habit if uh, there were times when people would walk by I would just put my head down and start whispering or if somebody's approaching I would just say to John so and so is walking past or just yeah. just aware of who it is and so um, and in this case I saw and I just sort of whispered and he, and he just looked at me and I said, yep. And, and it was this guy tall, not tall, but you know, he was thin and he was known as the thin white Duke, which is of course David Bowie. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So Elizabeth Taylor introduced us to David Bowie. Wow. We're getting, yeah. we're getting a question from Earl Gray who has a lovely T name. Well, we have a T named after you, Earl. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the origin of Number Nine Dream? And did John, is it true that he woke up and literally wrote the lyrics down or did he work on it for a long time? And That song was one of the last songs to be written. And, um, and so he woke up from a dream. You know, he, he would have his dreams or whatever. And he woke up and he just remembered this dream. And he already had somewhat of a melody, but you know, and he just saw that and he just started writing. John was very, um, you know, so, yeah, he was just so, he could write lyrics, uh, you know, you say, I need a line. He'll come up with something very quickly where we would struggle to do one line. He could do that in two seconds. It didn't, yeah. it just came to, that was his gift. And I truly, he was born with that gift that, I don't yeah. have and most people, you know, the creative has, but he definitely had that. Yeah. Well, Barbara, who's watching, loves your voice on that. And that, that must be a real solace in a way to know that not only in history and photographically and spiritually, you and John will be connected forever, but your voice is on that recording. Yeah, I know. And you know, it's funny. Um, I when I was I also do the background singing. So there's four of us doing background singing as well. Uh, that was because the uh, the the background people that were supposed to show up didn't show up. So we had, and John wanted to do it that night. So it was me, Lori Burton, who was um, she was a, a she's a, a fabulous singer songwriter back then. She used to write. Remember the Rascals? You know the they uh, had yes, a, really. big hit called "I Ain't Gonna Eat Out My Heart Anymore." She wrote it. And um, her and my friend Pam Sawyer, they wrote that song and they wrote a baby let's wait. So, so, and she has, and she is also the singer uh, with John on the background on one of Harry's songs. Um, uh, Harry uh, Nielsen being Harry yeah. Nielsen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was her, me, this kid, Joey Dambra and John. So the four of us sang the, the background vocals to that. Uh, um, and, no, there are no meanings. He woke up and all he heard in his head were these words, and that's what it was. So he wrote it down how he heard it. There's no meaning. He was he was very closely tied to the number nine, though, wasn't he? Yes. The Re Revolution yes. nine and his first address, Street House, was number nine. And he's born on the ninth. I think Mimi had nine cats. I mean, it was just everything Is was nine. Really? Yes. yes. It was a house full of cats, and I think he said nine, and I said, oh, my God. Well, so. Yeah. So that is why nine lives, they say. Yeah, and then of course I end up singing. Now, I had no idea I was going to do that solo bit on the whispering. Um, mm -hmm. John called me. I heard John needs you, and I'm going, why? I'm in the other room doing, you know, administrative work. You know, taking care of the budget for the for the production and everything. And I go, all right, what is it? 
And I look up and I could see in the um, in the in the in the room, the studio. I see the one one mic, and it's sort of dark and sort of you know with no lights, just except right there. And I'm going, oh, okay, what's going on? And he goes, um, I need you to say a few words out there. So he gets me. I didn't want to do it, and he says, I, I need you out there. And I said, oh God. He goes, now say in your voice. Say my name. I said, "What?" <laughs> you know, I was like, "What?" Are you? And it was so. It was almost. Um, I was very self. Uh, you know, it was just nerve wracking for me to say, and then try to say, "Be sexy and be." You know, like you're talking to me. I said, "Yeah, but I know where this is going. It, it doesn't feel." You know, so they were trying to make it nice for me. So it was so dark, but I could still see Lennon out there laughing. No. That's just wild. Um, that's what the reason I brought up number nine is, of course, because in the NFT series from coming soon from maypanggallery.com, which we just put scrolling across the bottom of the broadcast, you guys should uh, visit that website and get on the early VIP notification list. Um, we will have a series of Maypang's first drop, which is called Walls and Bridges, that are dedicated number nines, which are. Um, more collectible than you know, just the, the the ones through whatever the run that we're doing, and then there's also going to be cinematics where it's been an interesting thing, hasn't it? Martin, uh, my husband, has been working uh, with May and Oasis doing uh, sort of this new technology morphing animation I love of that. face. Yeah, and um, it's just been such a thrill for us to work on it. You know, we feel like John is sort of back around and course he is. keeping an eye on things. And I, you know, <laughs> twi yeah, we twice, know that. I don't have any feather boas, I swear to God, but twice last week I found a white feather in the and middle that, of You know, and he, he, when he's around, he's around. I mean, listen, I know what it's like. If I have to ask something, if you tell somebody, you say, oh, you know, I, I don't talk to John, but there are times you go, I wish you were here. Can you give me a sign? Nothing more than that. And then the next thing you know, I mean, this happened, actually happened to me in the, I was in the cab in New York City and I was coming home and I was, I forgot what it was and I had to think about something and I had to decide and I didn't know what to do. And I said, all right, I'm leaning in this direction. Tell me, should I do it? If you think I should do it, just give me a sign. As I'm leaving the cab, number nine dream comes on. And oh. I walk out and I said, I got it. I got it. Got it. And so, you know. Yeah, wow, that, that's amazing. We've got lots of lovely people from all over the world that some of them have met you. One of them is asking, are you going back? Uh, any plans to go back to Liverpool? This, this, uh, I think it was Debbie Martin. So she met you at the Adelphi and chatted to you. And there's a lot of people, you know, wondering when you're going to get out there again in Beetleland. Well, okay, here, here's the scoop. Well, because of this world pandemic that we have, um, and it's been very tough for the people in Liverpool, and I feel bad because I love Liverpool, one mm -hmm. of my favorite places. And I love meeting everyone out there. And um, the problem is because no one's sure about travel from other countries and everything, uh, they've, uh, I was just speaking to you know, uh, John Keats, and he said, I think this year they're gonna keep it more local for you know people around England. And then next year we're gonna try it one more time. And I told him I would be available for next year. Well, maybe we'll all go together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Rock that Ooh. cabin club. <laughs> the other interesting thing about May's uh, upcoming NFT collection is that uh, some of them, some of the collector pieces will be augmented reality enhanced by Imagine AR. And what that means is that they can be displayed by a trigger that is either a code, a graphic, or a place. So we have some very interesting, if, if any of you have ever seen the Tom Cruise movie, Minority Report, where he's walking around and things start appearing, we are going to be doing that with May Pang's NFT collection. So do head over to maypanggallery.com. We also have an affiliate street team. If any of you want to uh, help spread the word and make a couple of bucks on the side too, please join our affiliate street team network. We'd love to uh, build mm. further up the, uh, the Maypang Gallery fan club. And, you know, the Beatle family is really truly a family. So it is a family. Yeah, it, it truly is. is. Um, someone's asking here, do you, were you ever aware of um, John being around my nieces and nephews, Paul's kids? Did they ever interact with uh, Heather, Mary, Stella, any of the babies? Oh, 
it's the it's the time that they came by for a visit, but not Heather. It was Mary and Stella. Mm -hmm. I don't think Heather was there. I'm just trying to remember. But I remember uh, Mary and Stella. They were they were with us at the beach house, and um, and you know and and John and Paul were outside, and then Paul would come in, and um, you know and he'd sit at the piano. And at one point, I think it was um, I think it was Mary, and it said, Dad. And he goes, yes, Mary. Yeah. You know how he does this, you know. Yes. And he, goes, um, he said, are you some famous pop star or something? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that. Yeah. yeah, but she was only about, at that point, maybe about five, four. Mm -hmm. you know, she wasn't old. Yeah. So wasn't Mary old. was born in August of, what? Ben was born, the first yeah. grandchild, Mike McGee's daughter, Benna, was born on the 22nd of, 22nd December. of December 1968, and Mary was born the following August, so 69. So, yeah, 70, she... 70, 71, 72, 73, 74. She's about, about six, five or six. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Crazy. Um, so Mark Lindsay, our friend from Texas, Hello, um, has just posted kindly in the chat, maypengallery.com. And um, Thank you. Mark... Thank you. Yeah, no, Mark is, Mark is great, and he is the avid collector. He likes to get the first in every series, so we should, we should probably have to reserve something special for our Mark. Um, Elizabeth is asking, uh, where can she find some of your jewelry? Well, that she'd have to go on to my maypang.com, and on the end there's a, there's a place where they can buy, find the merchandise at, the, at the, um, one of the tabs on my website. And tell the folks about, you know, the whole the feng shui collection and a little bit about that because it is um, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So we should talk oh, about feng shui. I've gone through all of the stuff that they've talked about. So I understand. Um, you know, feng shui is something that my mother taught me when I was very young. It's, it's, uh, it's, almost, it's almost superstitious. You know, you don't do this, don't do that, don't have your back to the to the to the door you know when you're when you're putting furniture in you know you should really not you should be facing it not have your back to it but it's almost common sense it's almost a feeling i remember my mother uh she loved to go she would love to go to you know uh to the racetrack most asians do yeah oh, so, so as we were coming down the stairs I happened to touch, I was young, touched her shoulder. She went, oh, my God, don't. And I, and I freaked out. And I said, why? She goes, don't, don't. We're going to the racetrack. I don't need you. Don't, don't touch my shoulders. It was all these different things. And it just, that's not a, don't put that there. It's not good feng shui. I said, what is this? So as, as I got older, I started to learn about it's wind water. It's the, it's the movement and it's the movement of placement of furniture as well. So you want the flow. Yes. And so I went to look for um, jewelry pieces that would, you know. Flow correctly. Yeah. yeah to replicate. And I saw the worst jewelry that I could ever see. And I went, this is like cheap looking stuff. I did not like it. So I decided to create my own. So I started out with, um, stainless steel pieces mm -hmm. and because i think the stainless steel it's a it's a beautiful metal mm -hmm. and you know and it's and it's smooth and it's protective you know it's a protection piece and so you know it goes on so there you know and we do have it in sterling silver as if somebody wants to up it a little um so uh lace jade george is telling you you look fabulous and as as we all know, um, and we're soon to launch gourmet NFT with it, which is all uh, recipe cooking. And we hope to, we hope to have some of your Maypang recipes on gourmetnft dot as dot com as well. Um, Lace Jade is asking, what's your favorite thing to cook? Oh my god, it's whatever I like to eat that day. Personally, because I'm just such exactly. a I'm a hog. I'm a hog when it comes to this. But, uh, you know, for like my barbecue, which uh, my barbecue parties, which I'm famous for, I, you know, I don't have small gatherings. So I started out with a few people. And of course, I've had actually um, notes from people that get upset if I don't invite them to every party I have. And I said, that's it. I, I said, I got to stop it, guys. Hey, it's not a, an always because it ends up to about 200 people at my parties. Oh, 
Boy, oh boy. So well, it'll be 203 with her, me, and Martin next time. I know. And that you're invited because you're family. So that's it. But it was like, oh my God. But it's great. We have it. And what I what I love to do when I um when I have my own house and everybody came to my house, it was easier to do, was I would make my famous Chinese chicken salad. And I would have Whoopi would call me up and everybody knows Whoopi, Whoopi would call me and goes, What are you what are you doing today? I said, Why? She goes, you know, I really am. Um, I love that Chinese chicken salad. I'm decided I might have an impromptu barbecue. Wow. How about it? And so I'd be out there going, okay, you know, I'd be wow. doing it. Uh, thank you. Loving my purple hair. Thank you, Earl Gray. Thank you. No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Mark Lindsay, who is, he's a real doll. He actually came to some of our, we do these um, dinner with the McCartney's down yeah. in um, at Eculent restaurant in Kima, Texas. And when old traveling comes back, we'll have to do a, uh, a Pang McCartney sort of Asian flavored, whatever they're opening a new restaurant, a bigger place on the patio. Maybe Asian Scouse. Asian Scouse. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, you see that Mark has seen some of my parties live stream. Yes, that's true. I've had them. I What happens at my parties, which everybody else likes, it's everybody gets a chance to bring something that they love to cook. So, oh, that's nice. so mm -hmm. they bring it out. I mean, 200 people each time is a lot. So they must bring, have lots of leftovers. Yeah. So really? <laughs> not really. <It's> almost <laughs> they, yeah. they, they do. The things that I have leftovers, some bottles, some, some bottles of wine, some beer, depending on what we're not when we're there. <laughs> so, I, I know where it's going to go. So it's definite. But yeah, so we get that. But uh, the jam session is where everybody looks forward to because I have people like Simon Kirk from Bad Company or I'll have Dennis uh, Dunaway from, um, he was the original bass player for Alice Cooper. And wow. then I have original members from Blue Oyster Cult and then they will get up and perform and they love it. And, and I have Godfrey Townsend who does all the Happy Together tour. And he says, he goes, I only go to three parties. I don't want to miss and it just happened to be all mine because he enjoys playing with everybody else. Yes. That's That's fantastic. A dear, dear girlfriend of ours in the Valley, I think you and I were, um, last time we saw each other, Pamela Debar was there at that auction. She has legendary rock and roll parties too. And I think it's just a great way to get people together. Hmm. It's potluck. It's not all on the host, especially if you can have it outdoors. If people make a mess, it's okay. You know, I just can't wait until we can get back to, being able to meet more than two people or three people at a time at a six foot distance, boy. It's so true because the, because I, after I sold my house where I had my parties, um, my friends at carriage music, um, it's a carriage house music studios. Uh -huh. They offered, they said, you can have it at, at the, right. uh, yes. Yeah, so I have it at this place. Uh, it's in Connecticut and, and everybody shows up and we all just have a great, we all have a great time. Wow. Well, Let's go back to the a little bit about um, this Walls and Bridges drop, which is coming um, May 19th. I just want to say hello to Chris. I, I see you. Hi, Chris. Hi. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while. Yet. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot of people that we both know here. That's the whole thing with, with the Beatle family. It's just, you know, we all kind of know each other. And uh, Chris just joined. So I do want to mention that um, McCartney Multimedia, the, you know, the fan club part of things, we're – building up uh, and adding more, a few more people to May's street team. So if you go to maypanggallery.com and click on the affiliates link, um, you can apply to be in our street team for this whole historical uh, NFT series that May is bringing up. So the first one um, is Walls and Bridges. Right. Um, obviously there are, there are 15 photographs in that series and two different, two distinctly different locations, one business, one home. Tell, tell the kids a, bit, a little bit about what they can expect. Well, the photos, and you know, when we've been working on it, so they'd be a little different, as you say, it's in that other world and we've, uh, we've done that. But the story, just so you know, it's the faces, because a lot of people have seen the faces of John for the Walls and Bridges. And John's idea was to have all these different faces, which was great. But the first set was done on top of the uh, recording studio where where John recorded. And I took these shots. And when we sent them over to the record company, they said, we love them, but 
they are in 35, we need them in two and a quarter or a square. And I do not have the camera for that because that's like a whole other camera that makes that. And in this day and age, we could have probably done something, but back then you couldn't. It had to be, had to be what it was. So I didn't have a hazard blood, didn't have one of those, I guess, whatever roll uh rolly or whatever it was, I didn't have it. So no X. No roll eye. Oh, roll eye. Yeah. yeah, roll X is a watch. Oh, yes. Well, I know. Yes. <laughs> I don't have one. I only have an apple. Um, so yeah, so I said, okay. So John says, all right, bring the photographer on. He goes, you know, and we'll just do it. We'll do it again. So we did the second set, uh, which everybody has seen. It was on my rooftop where John and I lived in the city. So I just, I decided to take my camera as normal. And since we're home, I decided to start clicking from behind the scenes. So there's another set of photos. That did not appear, though, the, the B roll backstage outtake VIP photos that did not appear on Walls and Bridges, correct? Right. None of them did. None of them. Mine did not make it. But that's what makes them even more rare and collectible. And that's why we're bringing them to the world as NFTs. For those of you who are wondering what an NFT stands for, it means a non fungible, which sounds like some disgusting disease yes. between your toes, right? But it means a non forgeable, non reproducible uh, token, which means that every single one of May's NFTs will have a different serial number and a different owner, and it will live in your either in your wallet or in the cloud, and only you have access to it. So they really truly are one of a kind in a run of, you know, X amount of numbers. So very, like like a limited edition print at an art gallery. Yeah, but it's and, slightly different than what you normally see. So right. it, it's not your, it's not just a print that you sit on your wall, it's something else. Correct, it's a digital print. If you think of them like baseball cards, basically. Yeah. Um, but they live in the cloud on your phone, on your iPad, and you know, you can share them with the people around you and the lovely thing i love i can't wait to buy my first john lennon nft is that he'll always be you know right next to me in yeah. my purse in my pocket you know you just pull it up you're having a crap day pull it up and there's johnny boy smiling at you so i think it'll be fantastic and, and oasis uh digital studios are making them affordable to everybody they're going to start out around a couple hundred bucks so it's not any of this 69 million dollar nft nonsense that you hear out there in the world. And I shouldn't say nonsense. Some things are ultimately collectible if they're one of one. And we will be working towards a one of one, including an experience later yeah. in the year. But because of the um, the general age group of the Beatle fans, we also are partnering with platforms that allow people to buy them straight up on a credit card. You don't have to get crypto. You don't have to know about Bitcoin. You don't have to know any of that i have no idea about this crypto so don't right. worry folks i don't even have a clue i'm lucky i understand the nft i kept saying what is that non-fungible token what is that but yeah. it's, it's but digital, it's gonna be an experience it's a Definitely. digital baseball card basically yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, but there is a different just so people will know that it is for the nft which you're going to see is on the on the maypanggallery.com. But anybody who wants to know about my jewelry, it's on maypang.com. You know what I'm gonna do? That's a good point. Right <laughs> after this, I'm going to add a button to Maypang Gallery that says looking for jewelry and I'll click it back to your website so okay. we can link, link back and forth to both <laughs> of those. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Those, both of those things. So and do you remember that time John was staying with us mm -hmm. and um it was it wasn't when they all went up in the charts because that was a long time earlier yeah. but there was some good news that came in from brian in london they'd been booked to do something and and took the message up to john who was staying in mike's bedroom yeah, mike's bedroom with rembrandt yeah and uh um, i remember what was it i can't remember exactly what the news was but we just had a, a call from brian in london saying you know wake the boys up and tell them whatever and of course, my first thought always is put the kettle on, then go upstairs and waken them so that by the time they emerge, you've got a cup of tea ready for them. And uh, I, I remember John, you know, I tapped on the door and said, can I come in? It's Ange, I've got some news for you. And he's fishing around on the floor looking for his glasses, <laughs> blind as a bat, wasn't it? People don't realize that, you know, a lot of those 
photos. He really could not see. So, so everybody, you know, he was blind. He was, we're, if I took off my glasses back then, I mean, since then I had, I had some surgery done, but we were both blind leading the blind. We that must be splendid. <laughs> In our house, it's it's the blonde leading the blind. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's it's really a, a weird thing, but you know, people think, oh, look at him. You know, he's looking like he's ready to beat up somebody. He couldn't see you, so his first defense is always going to be, "I got to protect me." So he oh. never could see anything. So that was it. But he was he was just so blind, he couldn't see beyond here. So you can imagine, and people forget when things happen in the night and it's dark and flash, flash, flash bulbs going off. Oh yeah, somebody's coming at sure. you. I can't see a damn thing. I I would make an out loud announcement that John Keats has joined the thread, but who's asked? Who's asked? Oh. Hello, John. John. Hello, Keatsy. Cabin Club Keatsy, the man himself. There he goes. Keep it up next year. He lives in live on Matthew Street, and thank God the Liverpool and the the UK. I don't know the exact uh, fund, but they have been able to do live streaming from the cabin seven days a week. So if you if you're feeling uh, homesick for Liverpool, you can always go on the Club, Cabin Club's YouTube and tune in. They've got some fantastic musicians. Liverpool's kind of known for that. Mm -hmm. I got. I miss Liverpool. I miss it terribly. Yeah. I really. Do. So it was, you know, there was a, a lot of people that were going to come up to see me. A couple of, um, you know, people from the old Badfinger days. I had um, a couple of the, yes, the wives they, from from back then. I, I knew all the guys and everything. So it'll have to be pushed till next year. Oh, did we lose everyone? Oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, I think we're out. <laughs> I think. I have no idea. But anyway, thank you, everyone. If you can still hear me, I um, hope to see you soon. I have no idea where we are. Bye. Add to stream. I, I uh, accidentally cut myself off. No, go on, admit it. I put my elbow on the keyboard. No, oh, my goodness me. Okay, so I think May, May probably thought we'd um, run out of time, but let me see if I can get her back on, and we can try this again. May Pang, this is a new a new version of um, a new version of Streamyard that we are trying, and evidently we we pushed the wrong button. But wasn't that a fantastic show with May? And um, let me see if I'll. You know what? I'm going to text her. See if we can get her back on. So, because um, I've got her private number. Sorry about that. Broadcast was uh, set to a certain amount of time, but I have sent you, uh, if you click on the same link, you should be able to come back on if you've still got time. And if you're asked, it was, uh, I set it up for half an hour, but there you go. And there she is now. So we could say a proper goodbye. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. Yeah. It the call was set to half an hour for the broadcast. I didn't. I haven't done this scheduling thing with uh, Streamyard before, but um, you know, the technology. But we're back, and we've still got 25, 26 people. Because oh, you've done a new one, so yes, I see. Yeah. No, no, no. It's it's the same one, so we'll be able to save it and post it and share it and all of that. Oh my So goodness. absolutely, Constance Agatini, and uh, call her back. So yes, Chris Jude, I did, I did. So to sum up, um, we can't wait to see you. Yes. I know you're planning travel soon. Soon. So uh, as soon as that is, you must, uh, we're right by the airport. We come for a cup of tea or a glass of something stronger. Uh, I think in this case, it might be, since I'm not driving, I think something a little bit stronger. Yeah, you go. That's you know, I mean, I'm drinking water. <laughs> So that's about where I'm at right now. And every time I see you, when I talk to you, Ruth, you've got a glass that looks red when I see you. If it's, if it's five o'clock, you bet. That's it's good for the thins the blood. You know, once it hits five o'clock, a uh, glass of red wine is fair game, right? Absolutely, it is. She didn't, she didn't say whether that was five a.m. or p.m. By the way, <laughs> it's five. 
That's yeah. all that matters. It's five o'clock somewhere. somewhere. Exactly. And, you know, Liverpool does begin with liver. So what was your second clue? <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> there's, so lovely, there's a lovely story about the liver birds, actually, in Liverpool. You know, there's two of them. And one, they're, they're Mr. and Mrs., male and female. Uh, their names escape me right now. But one, the um, the female liver bird faces out to the River Mersey and she is said to keep an eye up the river for the sailors returning home safe. And the male is facing uptown to make sure the pubs are still open. Oh, my God. The pubs. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. love to tell you, my favorite thing when I go to Liverpool is get me over to the, is it um, is it called the one, the Liverpool one? You know, oh, yeah. shopping. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's it. I'm, in the, I'm in for the shopping. I'm, I'm bringing home, I mean, people think I'm crazy. I'm bringing home fairy liquid. I'm bringing home my, my, my Maynard's wine gum. Um, I, you know, I'm just sort of like I'm bringing home all the stuff that people would think, you know, you can go into the pound store, which is, of course, equivalent to our 99 cent store here. And I'm like bringing out, I have to get a new bag and just drag it. Or my favorite, um, what's, the, what's the place that I like? Uh, um, Primark. My favorite Primark. Yeah. I have to, I have to say Primark is different uh, in Liverpool than it is in London. I find that the clothes are much. I, I like I like the clothes in Liverpool before before London. So wow, I, I'm I'm not familiar with Primark actually. Ooh, oh my God! Well, when I first when I when I was first there, um, well, I've been there many times, but. A few years back, and it has to be something like within the last 10 years, I took my daughter and there was Primark, but I had gone there before and there was no, uh, you go there, it's like, you know, it's like your your cheapy place and it's low, you know, it's it's not. Kind of like, a, like a low rent target maybe? Yeah, a low rent. Yeah. Worse than, not even target, doesn't even reach that. But I walked in and I thought, oh God, they had some great, whoever the designer is, or uh, however many there are for that shop, they are they've got the pulse on the on the look on their you know uh, on their on the styling they have it down wow. and it's so, it's so amazing. So my daughter was going into college at that point. So I said to her before we left for Liverpool, I said, "You're going to see Liverpool. You're going to say, oh, okay, fine." And I said, "Bring an extra suitcase. I won't need it." Never needed it. I'll say, okay, fine. Can't argue with, you know, the girl. Teenagers, right. Yeah, terrible. So I go, so we go to Liverpool. I take it to Primark. Now, nobody wanted to be caught dead having a sign or having a bag that said Primark. Everything was thrown into another, to another bag. Oh, so nice. we go there and we buy everything. She saw all these clothing. And I call it throwaway clothes because you won't, it won't matter how much you spend because it wasn't a lot of money in the end. So <laughs> yeah. she had like 50 items for like $500. Funny. So it wasn't a lot. So, so, it's, so it's a fashion store like H&M kind of? Is it just yeah, it's like an H&M but bigger. Oh, bigger. wow. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and it was just – but they got their hands on the pulse on, on – on their you know designs but it was so funny so i said to her i said how are you going to fit all this clothing now get it back to the states now that you didn't bring a suitcase we had to go buy a suitcase so we went off and buy a, bought a suitcase for her to shove all the stuff in now as we roll on the next time i go to liverpool every person now has i went to primark Oh, best. that's funny. So the, it, they branded themselves. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the States now. I haven't gone to it yet. They have oh, it here in the States. They've been about the last year, year and a half. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. I'm getting a, a question about um, if you still have a couple more minutes for us. And the story you told Martin and I last Sunday, which I was gobsmacked, when you and John saw the UFO over New York City. There's so many rumors about that. If you what is the rumor? It straight. I, <laughs> there's, there's no, it's very straightforward, actually. I mean, we came home. We were, we had taken a nap from this. We were at the recording studio. So I wake up, John wakes up. He goes out to the, we have a balcony. He goes out and we face 
the like I was gonna say the Mersey, the East River. We just right. like the Mersey. So he's going out to take smoke because he those those French cigarettes are horrible, the Golas. Oh. And so he knew that. So he always tried to go out. And it was a Friday night in New York City. And where we lived in, in New York City, the the street is very um Let's put it this way, most people on that street are gone away for the holidays. They're never around. So Friday is more like, I'm off to the Hamptons. Right. So, so this was a Friday night. In in August, if I recall, right? Yes, in August. And all of Europe gets shut down. Every place gets shut down. So so I, I'm in the other room. He goes, I said, what do you want to eat? And he goes, how about pizza? That's the beauty of New York City. Hello, delivery. Um, so I ordered the pizza and I'm now I'm looking to put something on for the pizza boy. And I hear, I hear my name being yelled out and I go, yeah, yeah. I don't go out. John could go, you know, building could have been on fire. I'm saying, yeah, sure. He just says, may get out here. And I'm like, no. And then I heard it by the third time I heard it in his voice. And I said, oh my God. So I go dashing out and I said, what do you, and I stopped and I stared at this thing going. And he goes, you're looking at it. He goes, you're seeing what I'm seeing. And I'm screaming. It's an effing UFO. Oh, my God. You know, and I'm screaming. I believe him. Yep. So I'm just going on and on, and I'm screaming. And I am looking at this thing, and it's so close, literally, that if I always said that if uh, at that time, if Reggie Jackson could hit a home run, he could hit this thing. That's how close it was. I could see the underbelly of this of this thing, and I could see the heat waves, and I could see the white lights surrounding the the small ship, whatever you want to call it, going on and off, and one red light. And now obviously, it's like a, a dark metal color, whatever it was. But I could see the the heat waves all about it, and it was just very. Um, I watched it for a good solid going down the river. It's probably about a good solid 10 to 15 minutes of it. Was it loud? Did it make a noise? No noise. It was absolutely dead silent. In fact, I could hear from where I am, I could hear uh, down, down on the street, I could hear all the noises from the street, but nothing above my head, nothing directly over my head. There was no sound. Not, I could hear across the river. I could hear the street noise, I could hear the horns honking, but this thing that was directly over my head, and it took its time. It went from here, did one of these, <laughs> then it straightened up, then went around, and it sped up, came out again, went up, came down, and it just kept doing all those little things, and I watched it go down the river. I tried to take a photo, and I couldn't. Um, the the it, My, my uh, Pictures look like it uh, had gone through an overexposure. So, wow! So, you read, Gabri everyone on the on that. Yes, I saw a UFO at nine o'clock at on August twenty third. That's exactly when. That's when we saw. Him. Wow! What a story! I yeah. believe we we all we and just. Just I don't want to. I want to stop you for one second. I know there are other stories from other people. That was the only time, and he only drew one that I know of. He only drew it once on a. So John didn't want to forget what he had drawn, and he drew it on a on a back of an envelope because his eyes. I don't want to forget what I just saw, and that was the only time he had drawn it. And I don't care um, whoever else said that he's seen it before. He had never seen one before. Wow! Just say, wow! 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 We saw one in Nashville with my late my late aunt Joan, my mom, and Martin and I. And uh, mm -hmm. it was it was definitely not moving like yeah. any regular FAA aircraft for sure. Oh, yeah. I love when people say, "Oh, there's oh the, the government has it." No, they don't. Yeah, no. no they don't. I mean, if you, if believe me, if the government had that speed of air travel, don't you think presidents would be flying across to G8, G20, G30 summit meetings? To France in ten minutes and back again to save time. Of course, and yeah. I don't. Right. I. I. I truly believe. I. The. The. The goal to think that, for people to think that only us, are the only one in this universe. Yeah. Like, you gotta be kidding me. You know. It's how arrogant. How arrogant we humans are, huh? Yeah. It's true. Huh? We got a few of those out there that just thinks we're it. And yes. I. You know. But John was a big believer 
of UFOs because he believed the same like all of us that there are other living creatures out there, whatever, yeah. however they look. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've kept all his UFO magazines that he used to order. Great. Wow. So yeah, so I have little things like that that you know we we were just so amazed so amazed by seeing it. So the two of us were like, oh God, am I so glad? He called me out as I'm his witness. Mm, yeah. So, you know that's why right. he said, I know that if I said it to you, you probably said, oh John, please go away. So yeah. I became his witness because everybody. In fact, somebody said to uh, to him. Uh, did Macy? And they said yes. He goes, could you put her on the phone? <laughs> so I was his witness. So that's how it went. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know, um, like I said, there, there's so much more to the universe, and that's what I think. John was one of the very early pioneers of of having the balls to articulate and to yeah. to share with the universe. Yeah. And because of his position of fame, you know, he could get away with it. Um, right. So many yeah. people, you know, now, I don't know, they're crazy famous and they could be using their voices for good things, but they choose crazy things. But what I love about bringing John back into, through your photography and your eye, um, back into digital art and storytelling and collectibles through this whole NFT world is that, you know, obviously I can't speak for him. I only knew him as a child. He was like an uncle. Um but do you do you think he would be excited about this new medium? He's always he was always excited about new things constantly. I mean, the fact that we could do it digitally and change things, he would be fascinated by yeah, it. I think he, was, so. he was so into technology. Mm-hmm. He was so into it. Yeah, I, I just think that there are people like like John and like Frank Zappa and like David Bowie that would really be able to embrace this whole new Absolutely. new technology. And the other thing too is I want people to know that we are only partnering with marketplaces that use uh, clean blockchains. We're not trying to dirty the planet. I've had a lot of questions about that with the people right. that we've brought on um, because, you know, mining Ethereum and mining Bitcoin takes computer power, which takes electricity, which takes not just solar but oil and gas. So as much as we've been staying home, you know, the crypto revolution is not the cleanest industry in the world. Mm. So Oasis Digital Studios and David Lukacs' team are very diligent about the artists that they represent on the blockchains and the marketplaces that we're using. So we are actually getting all of the technical details together and we'll be posting that on both maypangallery.com and gourmetnft.com, which is our culinary um, uh, arm. So you know, for those of you uh, green hippies like me, Ange and May, don't worry, we're doing everything we can to be, Absolutely. you know. To be a good, clean planet. Absolutely. Good, good carbon citizens. And uh, in fact, one of the uh, one of the platforms has a carbon neutral play. So we're looking very, very closely at that. So that is a question that I do get on email. Yes, and direct it to her. Direct it to Ruth because I have no idea how all this works. Well, She's a little better than me. I am the the digital diva. Absolutely. Um, I got one thing more to say to most collectors out there. I just want you to know that anybody who thinks that the letter that was a, they call it the P letter. uh, This is the one that supposedly John wrote to Phil Spector and was all in red and all this stuff. And, and that he wrote to him. I said, that's a fake letter. He would never write it. First off, if we're working with him and we were working with him every day, how soon, why would he write a letter? He could just pick up the phone to call. Did they forget that this is how it goes? You pick up the phone. Uh, and besides, we're seeing him every day. Why would he be writing a letter? How would he get it to him in time for the for the session? Yeah. So yeah. people yeah. are forgetting. I and mean, then when I, nobody asked me, obviously, because they probably know um, that I would say it's a fake. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, I looked at it and I said, that's not John's handwriting. Wow. And he doesn't write in red either. So yeah, like well, like, you know, be, before the interwebs, it was very easy to fake stuff, right? Yes. And say, you know, there's there's a, a supposed uh, letter to Americans going around the internet, supposedly from our old friend and um, erstwhile client John Cleese. Not him, didn't write it, but it started the rounds in faxes years ago. You know, 
And then oh, somebody yes. put it on the internet and John's like, you know, clever, witty writing, but definitely not me, not my style. Anybody who knows me would know that I, so that's what I love about this whole NFT thing is every single piece gets its own serial number. They are non-forgeable, non-copyable, not non-interchangeable. And right. so, you know, this new technology has really mm -hmm. given us this uniqueness and provenance like, like the old art galleries have. It's true. And I see John Bazzini. I just want you to know, I don't have any plans at this moment because I'm doing other things. Um, when I do, it's about expanding the, my edition of my book, Loving John. Who knows? Mm -hmm. At this moment in time, I thought I would have enough time. I don't. So I have to keep moving as the day goes. So right now I'm just doing the NFTs. Absolutely. So thank you so much for joining us today. Sorry about the timeout glitch, but you know, hey, we got you back and here we are. Please uh, go ahead and, you know, share this. All the all the lovely people from my gosh, we've had people on from Liverpool, uh, Iceland, Ireland, Israel. I love I love Iceland. I want you to know I've been well, there. I can't wait to go. Well, let's go together. Yeah, because I know somebody was I did I did something for Iceland Air and you know and here's the funny part. I stopped on into, we had to stop into Reykjavik, which I thought was fabulous. Beautiful place, beautiful water. The Blue Lagoon was amazing. Wow. And I ran into Yoko for the first time in over 20 some odd years. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds? You I, both live in New York City. Couldn't couldn't run into each other at Saudi's or the Plaza. No, for no Reykjavik. Right. In the same hotel. We were in the same Crazy. hotel. Crazy. On the same day. Wow. Yeah. That's well, that's another, another book. Another another story. Story. Good yeah. tease. Another story for another day, another show. Yeah. So get your butts on over to maypenggallery.com. Uh, register early for notification. We'll send out an email um, for you kids when the NFTs are going on the blockchain. And if you are looking for a belated, fabulous Mother's Day gift for anybody, please do go to maypang.com and check out some of May's jewelry and books and so on and so forth. And thanks so much, May, for taking the time. I know how crazy busy you are. So this is super to get some some time with you today. So thank you yeah, so much. And I'm just glad to see everyone wearing purple. Oh, perfect. That's perfect. right. <laughs> Thank you, Ange. <laughs> my pleasure, man. I, you know, it's, I wish I wish the fun. whole world was purple because red being conservative and blue being democratic. If you mix red and blue, you get purple. That's right. Go. So, all right. all right, my sweet. We we'll hope to see you very soon. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you very much, and we'll see you all of a sudden. Bye bye. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Here we go.